age 80. That means if in younger age group, the incidence is less. But as the age advances, that is from 40 to 80 years, as the age increases, the incidence of the lung cancer also increases because it is directly proportional to your lifestyle to the tobacco. The projected lifetime probability of developing lung cancer is estimated to be 8% among males and 6% among females. In India, if you study demographically or what is the incidence in the males, females, the rural and which occupation it is common, it is seen in all, seen in all religions, in all, especially in the age group, the mean age is around 50 to 55 and it is more common in males as compared to females but now the incidence in females is also increasing. What are the risk factors? 80 to 90 percent of the cases cigarette smoking is the common cause. Those who smoke, they have a tenfold or greater increase or risk as compared to a common man who does not smoke. If you use 15 cigarettes, one genetic mutation may occur and that may lead in future for cancer. Any type of lung cancer, whether it is a small cell, non-small cell, large cell, can be caused by cigarette smoking. Even, for example, I am not a smoker, but if I am in the environment where there is cigarette smoke or where there is smoke, it is seen that even I will develop, because I am in that environment, I may develop the lung cancer, I may develop problems related to the tobacco. That means environmental tobacco smoke or secondhand smoke is also an established cause of lung cancers. Husband smokes, wife doesn't smoke or the other way, the other partner develops the disease. This is one of the reasons. That means even passive smoking or secondhand smoke or environmental tobacco smoke, all is dangerous. As I told you that in Indian patients, we normally take the history when a patient comes, have you smoked, have you used tobacco in any form or no. In 87% of the males, they concluded, yes, we have used tobacco in some form and some part of the life. And 85% of the females also said this. And as the passive tobacco, passive tobacco as I explained, means I am not uh, smoker, but still I am sitting with friends and all those things and the smoke is going into me. That means I am not actively smoking, but I am inhaling it. So 3% of the people who develop cancer also had this type. So that means in 90% of all cases in India resulted from tobacco exposure. The relative risk of developing lung cancer is 2.64 for BD smokers, 2.23 for cigarette smokers and 2.45 for overall relative risk. Yes, the tobacco is the culprit. Risk of cancer is directly related to the amount consumed and duration of habit. That means if you are decreasing it, stopping it, that means your risk is going to come down. If no, if you take the more number of uh, times, the more number of quantity you take and for the more number of duration you take, that much is the higher risk. We all know for oral cancer also, 90% tobacco is the cause, for lung cancer also, larynx cancer also and many cancers like even breast cancer, bladder cancer, renal cell carcinomas, everywhere tobacco 
can be one of the cause. And if you combine tobacco with alcohol, it's a very deadly combination. That means, you know, it's going to be much, much, much more dangerous. And if you see the incidence of cancer in male and female earlier, it was somewhere around 1 is to 6, 1 male, 6 females. Today it is 2 is to 1. Why? The tobacco incidence, tobacco use, tobacco abuse has also increased in females. Just uh, to say, though, uh, what tobacco is and although everyone knows it, everyone knows it's a culprit, the government knows, the politicians know, we all know, we businessmen know, we doctors know, we patients know, we children know, but still we pay a deaf ear. Because why? We feel so many lakhs of people are working, it is their industry, they need their bread and butter. That means decoits also are doing the same thing. Uh, what I mean to say is, what is right is right, what is wrong is wrong. What is ethical is ethical. That means if tobacco is a killer disease, it is like a murderer disease, then it should be treated irrespective of keeping inside who or how much benefit it is giving. That means there are more patients coming, the doctor is earning more. That means he should uh, uh, encourage it? No. There should be a strict law. We should think for the welfare. As I told you, that the incidence in children, the young, our young school, uh, young children who are coming up, you see, they are catching up with it because of the maximum publicity, advertisement, and all that. Really, we need to do something for it. If you see the tobacco in smoke, for example, BD, cigarette, cigar, hookah, etc., all this can cause lung cancer. And as I told you, something is much more dangerous, that is smokeless tobacco, gutka, zarda, khaini, pan masala, oral absorption. You know, all this tobacco has around 7,000 chemicals, 100 are highly toxic, 70 toxins which can cause cancer. Because it contains nicotine, carbon monoxide, tar, tobacco specific nitrosamines, ammonia, and so many, you know, toxins which can, you know, cause cancer. Yes. See, after everyone would, who would not like to quit, but you know, it's always very difficult to just to leave a habit which we have calculated it. And you know, it's very simple how I get a habit. I'm not a tobacco, but when I go in a marriage, I use some, you know, uh, thing where a little bit of tobacco is flavor is given to it, like maybe in the form of a pan or some maybe, you know, some appetizer or something. Like. Slowly, you start taking it more number of the time. Then what happens? You start putting little tobacco into it. Then you start, you know, developing a habit. Then you become dependent. Then you cannot live it. Now, earlier you had control. Now it has control over you. So to quit is not an easy, but just a few way how we can go ahead by quitting it. We should first pick up a date that, yes, I want to quit smoking. And then once you do it, you should stick to it. But sometimes you break it, don't worry, start it again. Okay? The battle is not lost till you, you know, start trying and winning it. Then we keep trying it. Don't lose heart. Nothing has happened. What are the benefits also? I will tell you later if the time remains. You know, what are the benefits if you quit also? You should make a small note. Write down your reasons why you want to quit. Read over the list every day why you wanted to quit for your children, for yourself, for the society. Here are some tips you should think about. Write down when you smoke, why you smoke, what makes you smoke, in which environment you smoke, and try to curtain down, uh, cut short those things. Stop smoking in certain situations, such as you have a habit of taking a break, going for a, uh, after, uh, or after dinner taking it. So try to initially stop that before quitting it. Make a list of activities you can do instead of smoking, like playing, playing, you know, uh, watching a movie, going around with friends or something, some other activity, which a hobby, which you enjoy more or equally or a little less so that you can concentrate on those things. And very well, you can make use of the doctors. We are always there to support and, you know, try to, you know, go ahead together and try to stop and quit it. See, tobacco not only causes cancer, but not only cancer of the lung, but also of the oral cavity, larynx, esophagus, etc. Okay, it also causes lung diseases like COPD and all those heart attacks. Yes, tobacco is the cause. 
decay and fall of teeth, submucosal fibrosis, and so many, you know, uh, things are there. It is tobacco use is something like a suicide. Quit tobacco. Avoid. Initially, make it to half, one third, and go ahead stopping it. Don't come back. Whenever you have a craving, it is for a few minutes. Divert your attention, as I told you. Take the help of doctors, your friends. Avoid situation of temptations. But for all this, you need a very strong willpower to go ahead. And you know, you should notify all of them that you have quit it so that they don't come and tell you you start. Okay? You become a role model so that they looking at you, they also stop it. You should avoid trigger factors. Encourage yourself in yoga, walk, exercise and all that. By chance, you happen to smoke again. Don't worry. Start it again. This happens. It is something you are going on a road, you come down, do you leave the woe? Come back on the right track, go ahead, stop it again. Now, I was concentrating on tobacco. Why? I told you a little more. Because tobacco is 90% of the cause for lung cancer. Now, other reasons, people say we have not used tobacco, but we have developed lung cancer. What is the cause? These could be few of the reasons why you developed a lung cancer. For example, people who, you, uh, who are working, you know, occupationally involved in where asbestos, arsenic, nickel, or radiation exposure is there, or you are into hard rock mining where there's a lot of dust, okay, and you know, chloromethyl, ethers and mustard, sewage, stars, oil and coke companies, factories, you know, mines, where, you know, the exposure of these materials like asbestos, arsenic, nickel, and all is there or where radiation is there. All this could also be, you know, especially in Delhi or in nowadays, the pollution of the vehicles and earlier olden days where we used to have those chulas, where we used to burn the coal, you know, uh, to cook. Now to, uh, so all the d smoke can also be one of the cause for the lung cancers. And it has also been shown that, you know, if you use more of our diagnosis, not only in India, but in most of the world, but in India, if you see, it is, you know, that means out of 180 cancer patients, lung cancer patients, they are diagnosed in third and fourth stage. That means last stage. That means we have lost the precious time. We're in stage one, where it could be totally curative. In stage two, stage three, where we could still give better and better results, we are landing, we are seeing in the last stage. How can we? see and try to get all this 80 percent our aim today should be to convert that we should be able to diagnose 80 percent of them in stage one rather than diagnosing them stage four how can that be done that can be by awareness like these type of lectures by awareness in uh, hospitals in um, in you know schools by, by having specific topic over that or you know having some advertisements like that and you know, especially having a strict screening protocol means those individuals who are more than 40 years and those who are smokers or who use tobacco or in their family if there is a risk of lung cancer so that they can go, they can get themselves, you know, screened and come to know that the person is not having cancer or has the, uh, like you know, can develop cancer in the near future for that, for those screening. So, still studies are going on all over the world, but nowadays in screening, we use low dose, chemo, uh, low dose CT scans, which will give us an idea, like how uh, and you know, uh, is there any nodule appearing too? But when it becomes locally advanced, when it is spread or a metastatic or a stage 4 disease, the prognosis keep coming down. But with treatment, even in stage 4 disease today, the quality of life, the uh, survival is also increasing with the recent medicine. So early detection and screening should be given importance. Any person who is having cough or who is having cough which has not subsided for 15 days or those who are throwing out blood, hemoptosis, a major challenge, a major challenge confronting advocates of CT screening because sometimes we may have false results. We may have false results. It appears that nodules, like for example, I have done a CT scan to do a screening 
and I have found a small nodule which is around 5 millimeters, 5 to 10 millimeters. Now I am in a doubt, I don't know what it is and all. So sometimes we may have this, but if you do a screening, if you do a, if you do a, a proper early detection, then your results, like for example, in stage 1 will be more than 90 percent. So we should concentrate on early detection and screening. Those who are susceptible in families, those who are suffering from uh, lung cancer and all, those who have been smokers for a very long time, and those who think they are at high risk should undergo screening. Screening with x-ray, the better modality is by a low dose CT where we will be able to pick up the nodules will be able to pick up the disease early. When you go for it, you are aware, you know about the symptoms. If you have any symptoms, what are the symptoms, I will be telling you. When the symptoms come, it is not the early stage. Usually the cancers, initially in stage 1 and 2, they are not symptomatic. But we should never neglect the symptoms. What are the symptoms of a lung cancer? A person may have a cough, cough which is for 15 days to 7 days, that's okay. But a cough which is not, you are not uh, getting rid of, after taking treatment also it is not taking care of, then it really needs an attention that it should not be a cancer. If a person is having chest pain, it could be cancer, lung cancer. If with the sputum blood is coming, hemoptosis is there, then it could be lung cancer. Person is while walking and all, is dyspneic, this could be also one of the symptoms. If you are developing bone pains, clubbing, if there is a fever or weakness or there is difficulty in swallowing, dysphagia, maybe the nodes are compressing there or there is Meaning to say these symptoms like cough, weight loss, dyspnea, chest pain, hemoptysis, bone pain, clubbing, fever, weakness, dysphagia, etc. You should not neglect them. If the symptoms do not resolve in a week to 15 days time, you should go, you should check, you should ask yourself and your team whether am I suffering from any disease. And when we, as a doctors, we take a history, we should always elicit whether there is a loss of weight, whether there is musculoskeletal pain, whether there is headache, there is any seizures or weakness and when we examine we should look for the lymph nodes as doctors and we should see whether there is any when the person who is talking has he got any change of voice. All these things should be taken care of. Sometimes there may be, you know, uh, for example, if a person is having dysphagia, what could be the cause of dysphagia? That is difficulty in swallowing. Maybe the mass is compressing. If the person is having hoarseness, change of voice, maybe the recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, is getting involved. There is Horner syndrome, that is anophthalmosis, tosses, anhydrosis, etc. Is there pleural effusion? That means breathlessness or pain in the chest is there. Or you know, heavy, uh, for example, like if there is an effusion or tamponade, that can also occur. So all this, as doctors, we need to, you know, look into all these things, whether the patient who has come is having all this. So sometimes there will be skeletal symptoms like the clubbing, hypertrophic primary osteoarthropathy, cutaneous manifestations like the skin changes, or there may be sometimes neurologic Symptoms like the myopathic syndromes, peripheral neuropathies. Sometimes there may be hematological manifestations as a part of the syndrome, like the migratory venous thrombophlebitis, DIC, etc. Now, we all know why cancer has a tendency, means to be like for example in lung the disease starts it goes nodes nodes it goes to the different parts and different organs of the body which we call as metastasis and the spread of disease an important feature which makes any cancer a killer disease is the metastasis 
And we have commonly seen that even, you know, this height metastasis, what happens? The tumor cells are put in the blood vessels, in the blood streams, and the blood, wherever it goes, the disease spreads there. For example, like there is a nodal spread through the lymphatics, there is a hematogenous spread. For example, likewise, in lung cancer, the commonest site of metastasis is the adrenal gland. In 50% of the patients, the metastasis occurs to the adrenals. And you know, other than this, the liver, brain and bone are the commonest sites of metastasis in lung cancer. So what we do is, we always keep screening. Like for example, if a person of any cancer comes, we always still go for a PET CT. And what are the investigations to be done and all? I'll just go ahead. So, now a person has come with a history like yes, and you think that this could be uh, lung cancer. How am I going to diagnose this? What are the things I should do? The disease in the lungs, and as I told you, most of the cancers, they're centrally located. The tumor is centrally located. If I need to treat it specifically today, even stage four, lung cancers are treatable, and at times they are curable. Why? because of the targeted approach, because of the good chemotherapy which is there. What we do is, now I have to, you know, to confirm, like for example, I'm cooking a rice. Unless I take a grain of rice, I don't know what, whether it is cooked, what it is, how it is. So for that, what we normally do is to confirm. First, we do an imaging sort of a thing, like for CCT chest, abdomen, or PET CT whole abdomen, that is like an imaging. Now, to pinpoint it, is it cancer? what type of cancer and which like for example lung cancer i told you non small cell small cell large cell others okay now i want to know whether it is non small cells because the treatment is different the treatment modality is different to confirm to know what exactly it is what i i can do a bronchoscopy with a scope i go and do an fnac or i take a biopsy from that area for centrally located tumors bronchoscopic biopsy or ebus is better for peripherally located tumors like in the adenocarcinoma, which are peripherally located in those patients, a thoracoscopic or a CT guided biopsy is better. And sometimes the nodules are very small, you're not able to get after doing twice bronchoscopy or this, then VATS, video assisted thoracoscopic biopsy, is the best procedure. And especially in small tumors, two centimeters tumors, you can go ahead directly, excise it, and come out so that you are also curing the patient. Or you can, at times, you can use stereotactic ablation radiotherapy. So by this, by the CT, by the biopsy, and by the surgical techniques, we have come to know, yes, it is a cancer. It is of stage 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what next? After staging it, now I have to see if it's an operable case, whether the patient will tolerate the surgery or no. For that, I need to know whether the lungs are functioning well or no. I do a PFT, pulmonary function test. And I see whether his forced expiratory volume is good or no. Whether his carbon monoxide, DLCO, okay, that is diffuse capacity for CO or blood gas analysis, which will give me an idea whether he can tolerate or no. If I resect a part of the lung or the whole right lung, whether he will tolerate or no. So this is a very important assessment because this will give us in the post-op period, how will be the morbidity, how will the patient tolerate the surgery, how well and fit he can go? Do we need to build up the patient before this? Now, we have come to know. We have staged. We have diagnosed. Now, we have to treat. What is the treatment of a lung cancer? Treatment, we know in all cancers, is three. Surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Early stages, it's always surgery. In a locally advanced stage, we normally make use of all the three. The surgery, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy because the disease is a little notorious at that stage. Now in stage 1 and 2, surgery, go in or through a video acid thoracoscopy and remove the disease or do a thoracotomy, go in, remove the disease or you do a stereotactic ablative radiotherapy. Now when the disease is a little more, when the node is involved or the uh, disease is of larger size, then we can think of giving chemotherapy, that is induction chemotherapy, but there are no randomized control which favor induction chemotherapy. 
And then what we do? We can make use of the IHC, what we were talking about, EGFR, Keras, ALK, you know, where we can, you know, use this modality by in the form of Jeftinib or Crizotinib and all that. And so usually, for example, in a locally advanced stage 2, stage 3 disease, you have done the surgery, okay? Now, since the disease bulk was more, there is chances that there may be microscopic disease in the blood. We make use of chemotherapy to get rid of the microscopic disease which is in the blood. Or we give them, you know, um, like the jeftinib or the crizotinib and all that, if that. So, like this way. And when to give radiotherapy? When the nodes are, you know, more bulky, when there is a locally aggressive disease. At that time, we make use of radiation. And when during surgery, the margins are nearly closed where there is R1 or R2 resection, but the survival in such cases is less. Then chemotherapy, chemotherapy is doing wonders today in lung cancers. We have different lines of chemotherapy. For example, if you see, for us, uh, first let's go the commonest, the adenocarcinoma, the pemetrexate, the paclicarbo, and after that, if it is EGFR positive and all those things, then they are really do a wonderful job. If it is a non-small cell, then etoposide, uh, cisplatin, carboplatin, and all those things. And when the disease is in stage 4, and we say, oh, there is nothing going to happen, but that time, if the IC markers are positive, that time we can make use of them, and we have also in such patients good survival. So, in resectably locally advanced non-small cell lung cancers, we can give concurrent CTRT after the surgery. And how much radiation we give? We give normally around 60 gray, that is 2 fractions per day. Now, so treatment we know, it is surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, all together as the stage advances and initially it is surgery and radiotherapy. What are the advantages I would like to tell? See, if you quit smoking tobacco right now, after 20 minutes, your blood pressure and pulse rate decreases, your body temperature of hands and feet increases, you start feeling better. Within 24 to 48 hours, the chances of heart attack start decreasing. Ability to smell and taste improves. Within two weeks to three months, your circulation improves. Walking becomes easier, which used to find it difficult before. Within one to nine months, the coughing decreases in most people, sinus congestion, fatigue, shortness of breath, all that decreases. Your heart disease risk starts dropping down after one year of quitting from smoking. If you quit smoking within 5 and 15 years after that, your stroke, your chances of getting a stroke or paralysis come down. And as years advance, after 10 years, and you know your chances of developing cancer, your chances of developing uh, any lung diseases, heart attack, stroke, all come and become nearly normal after 15 years. So there are many advantages. So today, take a pledge that yes, I'm going to quit tobacco. And yes, it is a fact that lung cancer, though it's a deadly disease, it is definitely a preventable disease. And how can we prevent it? The only answer to that, 90% of them, we know the culprit is tobacco. Quit tobacco and significantly reduce your risk for all cancers. So there are many consequences of spit tobacco also. But now, how to win over, how to control lung cancer? I said early detection and early detection screening. And other than that, you know, there was a lot of you know, going on, whether should we increase the pictorial picture from 40 to 85 percent? I would, if you ask my individual opinion, yes, we should. Because the more the awareness, people will not go for it. And I think there is no harm by doing this. India will become the first country in the world to have such a, uh, you know, going against tobacco in a big way. And that will definitely, definitely, people, what they see, they believe. Okay, and yes, go, government is doing a good job by increasing the VAT of tobacco products, and I think this will also go a long way. And we should not, we should always disbelieve that if I take little tobacco, nothing is going to happen. No, tobacco is a killer disease; it will engulf you slowly or later. You should also quit, 
and also encourage others to quit tobacco. I am strongly against ban of tobacco. We should also discourage advertisements related to tobacco. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much uh, for uh, giving us a very, very brainstorming session, I would say, the way you delivered the lecture uh, by telling uh, all the viewers that uh, nothing is uh, impossible. If we pledge, if we think, yes, we can do it, then everything is possible. And as uh, we always say that prevention is better than cure. So, uh, first attempt for uh, preventing the things, for preventing uh, the disease to affect us. So, uh, prohibit tobacco in your personal life and if in any case, uh, the lung cancer or any type of cancer affects you then as the doctor himself said yes it is curable yes it could be prevented but just you want to do is consult your doctor consult the hospital uh, you want to and uh, then uh, see you can uh, see the change in your life um, thank you sir thank you so very much once again for uh, uh, giving us uh, a deep thought into this uh, very topic that is on the uh, lung cancers and dear friends if you want